Today's episode is presented by Lodestar, the fee experts. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Lending Leaders. Our guest today is Mike Hajar, a mortgage advisor at American Financial Network, mortgage planner, um, podcast aspiring host as well. Um, really excited, Mike, to uh, have you on today and chat about kind of what you're seeing in the industry um, and all things mortgage. Likewise, Jim. Thanks for having yeah. me. Man means so, the world. Yeah, absolutely. So I always uh, like asking this question. How did you get to be a mortgage planner? How did you get into this industry? So in 2005, I'm show my age a little bit. I'm, I, I, I was 18 when I started, in all fairness. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a, a family member of mine that was, mm-hmm. uh, he used to be on like the wholesale side. If you, mm-hmm. remember, you know, if you remember the Equifirst days and um, all the subprime things. And then mm-hmm. um, I was debating going over to college over at um, Michigan State. Mm-hmm. And then I had the ability to go locally here um, to Oakland University. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought that I'd be able to juggle, you know, it looked yeah. lucrative. And I tried to kind of do the school and work thing for for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to make a decision in my junior year of college where I said, um, probably like at that time was more of an egotistical decision because I didn't yeah. really know much, right? Well, and was, you were I, 21. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 Tw- 20 for me. Oh, so I was fair enough. Yeah. Um, definitely not, not mature um, yeah. or as mature as I am. And, and, uh, but I'm happy I made the decision. I, I think timing mm-hmm. is, is everything right. And, and it yeah. was part of my plan. Um, mm-hmm. But I decided to drop out of college at, at mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then pursue the, the mortgage industry full time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's, it's, you know, really been, a been, been fun since then just, yeah. just growing. One of the things I liked about just looking at your profile is you make the distinction from mortgage broker, loan officer to mortgage planner. And I wish more people would do that. So tell me a little bit about how you view this. And a mortgage is a more holistic process than just a transaction or just an interest rate. Um, sure. never having to talk to someone again. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that's that's a great question. And and really, the, the concept was brought to me. Um, you know, it's nothing, mm-hmm. nothing new that I invented, right? This is right. if you go back to the Tim Brahims of the world, and, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, the, the Dave Savages with the mortgage yep. coach, I was really a student of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still am. But the, the whole mortgage planning approach is helping clients make decisions today that are aligned with their current, but also their, their future goals. I'm actually, mm-hmm. um, my business partner, my mentor, Rob Zebart, mm-hmm. is kind of the one who took me down that path. And what his focus was, or, or rather mm-hmm. what he's brought me into the world of, is, for example, in January, we'll be down with 1,500 financial advisors. Mm-hmm. Um, Rob is actually leading a, a breakout session, but mm-hmm. to take that back to mortgage planning, the reason Rob even got me to go there was he's mm-hmm. like, Mike, you got to get down here. Uh, obviously we love doing business with advisors. He said, but more importantly, they're talking about mortgages 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. And what they're talking about is that the, the number one place that people lose money unknowingly and unnecessarily mm-hmm. is one, how they acquire real estate you know, cash payments, mm-hmm. severely large down payments. Yeah. Um, and also the, the other part, uh, the second place they lose the, the most money or is it still in the first place is how they pay for their mortgage, right? The 15 mm. year making extra payments. Right. Um, but really just aligning a client with on our website, homeloanplanners.com, mm-hmm. it'll show the, the sort of advisory team that we put around the client Right. Um, and yes, you're right. It's a holistic approach because that involves us, the realtor, yeah. the financial advisor, the mm-hmm. CPA, and the estate planning attorney. Right. Uh, now, luckily, we've actually even enhanced it. We've, we've brought in a property tax assessor locally wow. to make sure that because we need to know what those tax increases will be, right. you know, at least if we're looking even even a year out. So when we're making sure we're doing retirement planning yeah. um, with those other professionals that our numbers are, are to a T. So sorry for the long-winded answer. No, that's but, great. Yeah. Um, the whole concept is just kind of being there before, during, and most importantly, right. well after the close. Well, it's not simple, right? So it shouldn't be a simple answer. So when you, 
When you do sit down with someone for the first time, how do you start? What's your first question? Typically, I'll, I'll dive into their goals. They don't, um, mm -hmm. as I'm asking them, them some of the questions, um, Tim Brahim's was, you know, called the, the, the page five of the 1003 because that was a mm -hmm. blank page. But when somebody's taking a typical mortgage application, they mm -hmm. may say, you know, uh, where's the down payment coming from, right? Right. Where when I'm talking about the down payment, I'm also going to get into retirement. Is there, right. is there anything tax free? Do you have an advisor? Do you have a CPA? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, excuse me. So it's just, it's the, mm -hmm. the basic loan consultation, but yeah. I make sure they walk away with three things. One, knowing that, um, what our business model is and, and what it mm -hmm. means to them. And then I don't think a client should, it's, it's wild to me that at the end of a call, clients are out and they don't know they're out shopping and they still don't have an idea of what their payment and closing costs are going to be. So I make sure they walk away empowered. Um, but not only that is also just knowing when they're out there going shopping that, yeah. Hey, this is what you're going to be looking like on a payment. This is like yep. cash to close. And then they can properly and confidently go out there and shop. Yep. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And there's, I'm actually going through, I'm selling a house and buying a house right now. And one thing um, that I didn't realize about the process and I think is a little in, is interesting is I, I have two young daughters, both in daycare. That does not go into my ability to afford a mortgage in the <laughs> eyes of a mortgage officer. That is equal to my mortgage payment right now. And it doesn't matter, right? Well, for the next four or five years, that matters quite a bit to me. So it's, um, you know, I think there's a problem that some people can get into is just because you can afford something doesn't mean you should, right? And I think when you look at holistically and being a mortgage planner, I think that's hyper important because, you know, there's there's a can and a should, right? And like <laughs> the trying to understand that, like um, my wife mentions it. She's like, we can't do that. I was like, no, we shouldn't do that, but we could. <laughs> well said. So, yeah. Um, Love so, that. Um, you know, obviously you've been in this industry for a while. I appreciate the shout out to Dave Savage. I actually saw him. Uh, just recently at the mortgage annual, uh, mortgage bankers annual show. Uh, nice. So that was awesome. That he's been on this podcast as well. But um, love Dave, man. Any, um, so in in growing from you having these conversations alone to leading a team to leading a branch, how do you kind of try try to scale that? You know, you're very transparent. You, you obviously want are trustworthy. People trust you when they're going through this process. How do you then build a team? With that in mind, I'm going to give a huge shout out to my business partners, um, mm -hmm. Rob Z. Bart, Fritz Reichardt, mm -hmm. uh, my divisionals, Matt Schultz, John D'Onofrio. These guys are like family to me. Mm -hmm. um, my coach, Anthony Casilla. So I've, I've mm -hmm. surrounded myself with one people that have had um, much more success than I have. Probably mm -hmm. I'm the youngest person on our on our leadership team. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't get into too much. Of course, I'm the millennials, so they want me to come bring yeah. in, you know, the tech and then this and that. But I'm a big believer of, of the fundamentals as well. So when we look at scaling, mm -hmm. um, I think what we've done a really good job at. So we've mm -hmm. we've grown uh, Landmark Mortgage Planners as our, our branch. We mm -hmm. are the number one branch in the country at American Financial Network mm -hmm. um, wow. and, and primarily purchase business. But I think mm -hmm. more importantly, we don't have you know, thousands of loan officers scattered around. I think what right. we've done well for scaling is that mm -hmm. we've made sure, like I could teach strategy all day long. You could right. teach strategy, right? But if the mindset and the empathy factor isn't there, mm -hmm. I can't make somebody care, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what we've done uh, well was found people and partners who are very aligned with how we think and appreciate mm -hmm. it. And it's some people don't care, right? Some people just want yeah. the transaction done and whatnot. And, yeah. and I'm not knocking anybody. Um, but for us, the ability to scale has come from really finding people who, who are more aligned with our core values. And then, of course, you know, we, we go through the things of skill-based testing and mm -hmm. this and all the, these things. But m the most important factor we found, whether it's on the ops or the sales side, um, was that we needed that empathy factor there because mm -hmm. that's basically what our whole business model is is about. Yeah, I like that. I don't know if you um, are familiar with Gary Vee, but I feel yeah, like he's man. always he's always preaching empathy. Dude, didn't he have a wine brand named that? So yeah, yeah, he's got a wine I brand. Like is it, is so, it, I, yeah, I think, I think it was right. or he sold it. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's you know all over the place. Obviously, absolutely. But, uh, man. Yeah, 
Um, that made me think of that. So you mentioned technology. We're a mortgage tech company. Um, when you're assessing technology and trying to that, how does how does that play into what you do as a loan officer? Obviously, a huge part of your job is that empathy, building cross trust, having that interaction. Um, how can technology help you do that? So this, obviously, you know, coming from the yeah. tech side, that can that can spiral a lot of different directions. But if I yeah. if I were to narrow it down to a couple things of what's really helped me over even the last six months with tech is probably at least because of social media probably moving faster than than yeah. we're used to or at least we're seeing it now right where in the yeah. past we might not have seen it as much mm -hmm. um but i mean chat gpt i think mm -hmm. if 30 percent of my day is spent with with chat gpt oh wow um like for example this let's just say right now you sent me the transcript on this I've already got GPTs built out to say, okay, take this transcript. It's already got the tone that I want. Yep. You know how, how all that works. Mm -hmm. But I'll drop that in there, and it'll create my Facebook written post. And then mm -hmm. it'll create my LinkedIn 800-word article. And yep. then it'll create my newsletter wow. that goes out to mm -hmm. partners every week, right? So AI has been, been obviously a big factor on that. Technology, I mean, I'm, I still mm -hmm. go back to the basics. I'm a mortgage coach guy, right? So. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. in, implementing that in, in a lot that we do, but then also from, to me, and, and this is, you know, my buddy, it always says this, uh, Amir Syed is uh, the, the social media is now business media and it's yeah. the new CRM. So mm -hmm. we've been, been leveraging as me specifically Instagram, um, mm -hmm. and that's created very strong or strengthen bonds that were already there, um, or also helped me to really stay in front of referral partners as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's it's different angles and, and different things, but the combination of, of, of those things has, has been uh, a major, major mm -hmm. help for us. No, the and chat GBT kind of surprised me. I mean, it makes sense. I think that's the first time it's come up when I've asked anyone that question. Uh, are you using it for things aside from content creation, or is that kind of the main purpose at the moment? Bro, I use it for everything. Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. yesterday I needed to, I just had a conversation with it. I plugged in. My girl's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, chat GPT. She just roll her eyes, right? Um, but I was asking because I was doing the studio and whatnot. I was like, yeah. you know, I hate the office commercial building, like overhead lights. Yeah. I was like, well, which lights are good for your eyes? And all I did was just, she's like, this is what we need to look for. So all I did was pull out my phone. I started saying it to chat GPT. Right. Um, and then it started listing out things and, you know, comparing equipment, mm -hmm. the, the amount that I use chat GPT is, um, now that I think about it, after you say that is, yeah. is pretty wild. It's, yeah. I'd say a good part of my day is spent in there. Um, mm -hmm. we saw an example of somebody who fed it all this stuff from the medical journal and was using it as a therapist. I'm not yeah. recommending that or giving medical right. Right. advice. Yeah. I'm just saying the extent of the input. Um, is how powerful that output comes out. So it, it's yeah. been really wild how we use it. Yeah, I think once people understand how to work with it and actually craft the right questions, right? Like anything right. else, it's only as good as the questions you ask. So hundred um, percent. I think that that's interesting. And one thing that I've seen that um, we're headed towards is you know basically having an AI assistant, and that's kind of how you're already using it. So I think that was really neat, and that's the first. I don't do that nearly as much as I should, but I think that was a really cool cool answer. So I'm glad that that came up. Absolutely, man. That was so, a great question. All right, Mike, thank you so much for coming on. This is a great conversation. Really enjoyed the topics. Um, and you also burst the chat GPT uh, bubble on this podcast. So that was really fun. Um, so if anyone wants to find Mike, um, you can find him at um, Mike Hajar underscore mortgage on, on Instagram, as well as Mike Hajar on LinkedIn. So Mike, thanks again for coming on. And for everyone else, we'll talk to you soon.